Hey guys, this video is coming from a request. Uh, someone asked if I could expand upon a laser cutting video I made to include text tags, um, both in the user interface I took it and also in the uh, cut sheets such that it would be easier to assemble a model coming from the laser cutter. So everything gets sorted onto these two sheets or three sheets and there's also uh, text, text tags now that will accompany that um, and that could even help for instance with uh, stacking objects. So for instance, the labeling here is 80, 80, 81, 80-2, 80-3, 80-4, uh, and this should be able to help you both to kind of refer to a digital model to uh, assist in the assembly, but also uh, in the laser cutting. Um, there's a couple things I didn't do, but we'll get into that near the end. So let's just get started. So as you can imagine, this workflow used Grasshopper. Um, I'm going to go through it and just kind of explain what I did. So to start, here's just a small part of uh, Boston as a small example area. And what I'm first doing is I need to create contours. Um, but unfortunately, the contour tool doesn't really work well for this, uh, as well as it's a bit slower than my way. So uh, I'll walk you through that. But the ultimate idea that we need to get to is we need, the, we need these uh, curves to be organized at a per building basis, right? Because we know that we want, for instance, uh, this building here, we can imagine, to all work as a sort of in one list so that we can label from bottom to top as the same number of floors for one building. So that's, what's, that's what the ultimate goal is for this first part. So uh, we start with the contours. Um, we then, I just grab the uh, bounding rectangle, which I think this actually comes from a plugin from Pufferfish, but you don't need it. We just make a bounding box, get the bottom get the bottom face and then do border that into a rectangle or whatever. I mean, I mean, you just need a bottom plane essentially. And then I'm just arraying that plane upwards uh, with this series component. And essentially how this is working is I'm telling it to move and I'm telling it to move to uh, five different or seven different locations or something like that. So it just moves to each one of those locations. This is kind of the whole bread and butter of Grasshopper is being able to do something like that. That's right right where Grasshopper differs from Rhino. And then from there, I'm using the intersection tool, uh, which then will intersect the original B reps with the planes. Uh, that's super helpful, but then what happens is, am I recording this? Yeah, what happens is ultimately uh, the list is a bit, uh, a bit messy. What we need to do, um, oh, mind you, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm grafting the building list with the plane list. So essentially every single building is checking for collisions with every single B rep. Um, and you only need one of them to be grafted uh, because essentially each individual building now is checking for each individual uh, uh, B rep surface. So we do that and then what comes out of it is um, a number of empty lists because certainly there's a number of uh, planes that miss all of them, as you can imagine. Uh, for instance, this one doesn't really hit any of them. So we have a number of empty ones. So ultimately what I'm doing and that I need to do is I'm doing something called trim tree. And what trim tree does uh, is it, as you can see here, the first index of this path is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So all these are technically part of the same building. Uh, and that's 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. So it's like building 2, building 1, then building 2. And let's go find one was a couple, and I think near the end. So building 234, 234, 234, those are all the same building. And then these are the floors, building floor zero, floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four. So that's kind of how we want to go about this. Um, and all that we need to do then is we need to tr uh, trim this down. So it's gonna be trim tree. And that's really the, the mat, like that's really all there is to it for the magic to this uh, script here. And you can see now this has all been compounded into one list. And those are the floors. So it's building 240, 30 floor, building 234, and then floor one, floor two, floor three, floor four, floor five. So that's kind of uh, what we needed. And then uh, we, now that we have that, we, it's pretty simple. Um, we can create labels. Uh, so the first thing we know is that we want to have the index here represent the floor, essentially. So we can just use the list indices component, uh, which will just give you exactly what's happening to the left. And then uh, partner to that is, you know, we, we that's good for the floors, but we also want to have the building numbers. Uh, so this is what this component is going to do is it's going to get us the uh, tree statistics and then the tree statistics will function as 
the other part, which is the path, right? So if I just go back a second, right, 234. So I was just extracting 234 to 234. And now we're just going to match that up. Um, the one extra thing I did, it's not necessary, but it would certainly help you with your grasshopper, uh, with your laser cutting, is that I wanted to remove the uh, parentheses around this. There's a number of ways. I mean, I probably could have just done a number. Let's see if this works. Okay, that doesn't work. So what, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of ways to do this. I just quickly did Grasshopper, but I uh, have some Python. Uh, but again, there's a number of different ways you can do it, or you can just copy this here. Uh, this isn't even very good Python, to be honest, but uh, I took the path, and I just sat, I told it, first of all, it gave it a hint of a string. And then I basically said, uh, B is equal to X, because I'm plugging in X, and I'm just replacing the first parentheses, and I'm replacing that with nothing, and then I'm saying A, this is where, I mean, I could have done this all in one line, but uh, B dot replace, and then again, uh, the close parentheses, and then replace that with nothing. And then A is tethered to the A here. Uh, so then <clears throat> when that gets output, uh, it's the exact same thing. It's just without the parentheses. And I'm sure someone in the comment section will just say there's like a component to do exactly this, or like deconstruct path, whatever. By all means, go ahead and do it that way. Um, so then I'm going to concatenate uh, those bits of information together, and what that gets us is, and we could do this in a number of different ways, again, this is to maxim, uh, minimize the amount of time it would take laser cutting this, but for instance, this is zero, building zero, floor one, uh, zero, for instance, uh, a lot of these don't have multiple floors, but as you go here, for instance, building 57, floor zero, 57, floor one, two, three, so uh, that's how kind of does it. I just put this as a space because in that way you won't have to laser cut a dash which would compound your time I would say quite a bit um, just because of the movement required so I left it as just a space and I think that's enough notation for anybody to uh, to understand that so from there uh, it creates a number of a number of uh, text points and uh, as you saw previously, I had them as dots, but that's just a thing that we'll touch on later for using this as a utility when you're actually making your model. Um, but the next part about this is we're going to take these, the original curves, and this is, you know, this is going back to here, essentially. Uh, or sorry, right after I had trimmed the tree. And actually, I'm just going to flatten it now. Um, so by flattening it, uh, it's, it's just going to... Uh, everything's going to be one list, and again, kind of just dovetailing off of a previous tutorial, I'll link that, uh, how to use this sort of nesting algorithm, but uh, I just put a number of sheets, these are I think 2 feet by 4 feet, um, for a scaled model, again, I wasn't really paying attention to the floor heights and stuff, but bear with me, uh, so 2 feet by 4 feet, and it automatically nests them in there, so that it kind of does that, and then the good thing about this component, um, is it doesn't really shift the order of anything. So coming out of that, the geometry still has the same list order. So as a result, um, you're able to then, let's say we are able to take the numbers here, for instance, 181. And what I did, um, let me just put this here. See, I grouped, I grouped the numbers together because essentially right now is just these flaky numbers. Uh, they're all like just loose curves, which we don't want. Um, so I grouped them together to just kind of help with this sorting process. So now 181 is a whole, you know, 181 3 is a whole thing. And uh, I needed to take, I needed to move them because I know that the, essentially the list order is still the same. So I know I just have to move them back to their corresponding rectangle. Um, and to do that, what we do is, we take the original area of the original B reps. So we know that this is where we want them to start from, and we're going to basically use these as reference points. So the start point is going to be the original centroid of the shape, and then the end point is going to be that same shape, but just um, placed flat, right? So let me just reference that again. So, right? Centroid, see if we can find one of those circle guys, probably somewhere, oh yeah, there's a centroid circle there. So um, you can imagine if we drew a line, it's basically happening. 
is this is the translation, right? So it keeps that memorized, which is really helpful because then uh, we create that into a vector, which is essentially saying move move from here to here. Again, the one of the great benefits of Grasshopper. And then we're going to take all of those um, numbers and we're going to move them along those vectors. Uh, and so like that's that's really the benefit of all this. And there you go. So combined, you now have the numbers there. Uh, you can you can change the scale of the numbers if you want. Um, you don't want it to be too big. I'm picturing this would be an engraving. I, I mean, moving forward, you can. There's a ton of different things and transformations you can do to help with the laser cutting, like different layers and so forth. But I think I've kind of touched on that already in the other video, which I'll link. Um, so yeah, now this should be ready to go. Uh, you now have these two different ways of referring to things. So the, the 3D might be good for referring to how to orient, you know, what's face upwards and stuff like that and where to put them uh, on a larger base or something. I just use these text dots, which I think are kind of helpful in some ways. Kind of not though. Um, and then here we are, once they're laser cut, you can imagine gluing the pieces together. So that provides kind of a whole approach to your workflow uh, that would be beneficial for putting a model together. Um, I'll, I'll actually share this. Um, okay, I'll share this script in case any of you want it. I think maybe I just used one. There's two, there's two plugins, this uh, open Rhino Nest one, Open Nest. That's the one plugin, and I think uh, this Puffer fish one as well. I'll, I'll, I'll switch out the puffer fish one so you really only need uh, open nest to make this work. But again, I hope this was helpful. Uh, let me just check, make sure. Yeah, okay, so that's all the, you'll just need the open nest plugin to make this work. Um, so yeah, I hope this is helpful. This should work for, uh, I guess, closed, any closed B rep. I don't think it'll work for open B reps. I'm not really sure. Don't really think that would really work for laser cutting anyway. But uh, hopefully you found this helpful. Whoever that person was that needed this or asked for this. I hope this helps. And uh, yeah, keep, keep grasshoppering and keep rhinoing. Thanks, everybody.